welcome to this video on seasonality in time series forecasting, where we try to understand how seasonality as a component impacts our time series. So essentially, if we had to define it, seasonality, we can uh, talk about it in terms of the recurrence of a pattern over, say, a particular period of time, uh, which we typically like to think of in terms of S number of time periods, in the sense that if your unit of time for your time series is about a month, then S would be talking about 12 months, which is your entire length of an entire season, at which point your pattern is expected to repeat. So regardless of what particular variable we are measuring, there will always be a certain frequency, uh, a certain interval that can be measured in terms of time periods or S time periods. Now, seasonality is something we must understand is uh, quite different from cyclic data. If we look at something that is purely seasonal, say that's our variable on the y-axis and uh, x denotes the movement of time. We take a simple cost wave and uh, see how the pattern recurs. Now, if we were to look at the same data zooming out and uh, assume it's no longer a cost wave, it is uh, some kind of data that we have in terms of the expected variation, say expected variation in temperature, for a certain point of time, it has remained constant. Thereafter, you see the frequencies kind of changing. Uh, you could take the weather for an, uh, as an example that at some places where the warming effect has taken over, you can see the winters kind of extending for much longer. So over a period of time, let's say this is about uh, this begins at zero and goes up to T. Over this time, you can see that your data is seasonal. Now, if you're measuring the same data, zero to, this is your T over here, let's say, and you go up to 10 times T or 100 times T, that same data may no longer appear to be seasonal. It may appear to be cyclic as, as the uh, impact of it is seen over a larger period of time you may find a pattern that is probably seeing different frequencies, right? So in the sense that this, this might be, right, that's not the ideal drawing, but essentially, let's say we have about this kind of a time where your data is seasonal, but if you took, you took that as a frequency in itself and measured it over a period of time, you might find different frequencies, which would then be more of a cyclic data. All right, so what we are interested in is trying to understand at what point or, or how we identify the presence of seasonality in a series. Now, uh, one way to do this is using the SciPy library. We can use the uh, Fourier, fast Fourier transform, right? The FFT pack does the job. It does have a few advantages. Here, you're also allowed to adjust your frequency and take a look if your data is seasonal or not. Another method would be using our uh, stats module. We look at the time series analysis as a mod, uh, stats library. 
sorry, stats library, we're talking about the TSA module, time series analysis. From here, we step into the sub module that is seasonal and uh, look at getting decompose, or we could say dot decompose. There are a range of options within decomposing, but we'll be basically able to see the different components that the particular time series consists of. Probably explore more on this another, on another occasion. Now, once we identify what we have as a as a time see uh, as a data which is seasonal, how do we deal with that? Right. So, speaking of stationarity, which becomes or seasonal data. Now this becomes a concentration for most models, which are asking for your data to be stationary, right? In which case we'll have to remove that seasonal component that we have identified. We would typically do that in a process that is known as seasonal adjustment. Removal of the seasonal component. This would take place typically with the help of differencing. So we need to be careful if we are differencing simply for the seasonal component or we are also differencing for the trend. So if it is purely for the seasonal component, we are talking about the differencing for a period of, you could say S, S periods. However, if we have the trend that needs to be removed before that, that is something that we can say is removed prior to seasonal adjustment. In this case, our differencing is going to be a simple period of, or a single period, depending on the order of differencing. Let's say D is equal to one, then we say, Differencing only for a single period. This is what will detrend the data or get rid of the trend, following which we can do the seasonal adjustment. So that in a nutshell is uh, right. There's one part more we can talk about. We can talk about what if we require to hold back on the seasonality, right? If we would like to keep the seasonality intact. In that case, we can use it as, as a component, as an input component. In models like uh, Arima, for example, when we add a seasonal component, what we can call seasonal Arima, right, or in other words, what is known as Sarima. So here we are simply taking the autoregressive integrated moving average components as well as a seasonal, uh, an entire range of seasonal elements that are subscribing to your, each of these autoregressive integration and moving average. 